Welcome back to Monday Mod Tips. Today we're going to be doing a complete disassembly and reassembly of the Nerf Long Shot. First we will take a look at the controls, of course. It is a magazine-fed um, primed springer. So prime it back, that primes the blaster, pull the trigger, it fires. While the slide is forward, you cannot release the magazine. The magazine release is locked, but the trigger is unlocked when you prime it back. The magazine release is unlocked, but now the trigger is locked. There is also a prime indicator up here that turns red when it is primed. And uh, a final lock that I had not uh, seen or really realized was there previously uh, is that if you pull the trigger, it actually locks the slide. You cannot prime it if you have the trigger pulled. Uh, this is true for the Recon Mark II as well, but it turns out it's not the case for the Recon or the Retaliator. So there are some differences. There is an additional lock that is built into the trigger mechanism that will lock the slide. The jam door is also locked unless the slide is back. You cannot open the jam door unless the, the bolt is in the backwards position. But that is it for the, the main features. There is also, of course, the stock which has a little locking uh, clip right there, which can wear out and people will often put in a, a spacer or a, yeah, something to, to hold it back. Uh, other people like it shorter, so, you know, really up to you. Uh, so let's get this thing taken apart. Now the first thing we need to get off is that priming rod, and it is not designed to come off easily. It clips onto a metal bar and uh, unlike some of the later ones where it threaded on or threaded off, this one, you, you have to use some violence, and I am in fact going to use a claw hammer, because it's really good for this sort of thing. And you're simply going to slide it in under the bar there, and this one's gotten loose enough that you can't actually just pull it off, but um, you're going to want to get it on there enough. Try to get it as far under there as you can, and you're going to need to gently pop it off. Now the reason that this is dubious is that it is the clips that are on the inside of this have a tendency to break. Um, I don't think this one has broken too badly, but it will now pop on and off by hand. You can't, it does kind of pop on there, but you can now pull it off. Um, there are replacements for these, 3D printable replacements. It's just held in with two screws, so if you end up breaking it, uh, it's not the end of the world. You can, in fact, fix it. Or, if you switch to a pump kit, most of them replace this with a threaded um, rod of some kind. So. Don't feel too bad if you end up breaking that unless you've really wanted those. They do make replacement ones that have the knobs on the side if you prefer that style. All right. Now we tar start taking out the screws. I'm going to start with the stock. We'll see what kind of screws we have back here. Magnetize my screwdriver. Alright, so all these screws in the stock were the same. I didn't realize until I got this apart that this stock is in fact very cracked. Looks like somebody probably had a magazine in there and, and wedged it and uh, <laughs> did a real number on it, but uh, hasn't fallen apart. So Here in the stock we do have a couple of parts that I'm going to go ahead and take apart just so you can take a look. There are the uh, retention knobs for when you put a magazine in here. There's a couple of just spring-loaded knobs that stick up and hold the magazine in place. Kind of surprised they did that when they could have just gone with a, you know, a plastic clip, but this was back when they uh, did things a little bit more thoroughly, I guess you could say. These are a different screw. And then in here we have a fairly hefty spring. So that's a remarkably hefty spring, and then a little knob. Small bits, easy to lose, so keep track of them. Um, same thing on the other side, I'll leave that one in. And then we have our retention system, our, our lock that keeps the magazine, um, or keeps the stock in place. And it's it's also spring-loaded when the, when the slide, on the uh, button is forward, that part gets pushed in uh, when it is pushed back, it is then able to drop free, but it is spring-loaded and not particularly strong, uh, which is why the, the stock has been known to collapse. 
and that's actually even a different kind of screw than the ones from the magazine clip. And there are all the parts for that. It's fairly simple and will be fairly simple to improve. That's that taken care of. Now let's start taking apart the main blaster. We'll, actually, we'll start here in the back. Those are not the same screws. Interesting. So the screws that went in the stock are different than the ones coming out of the blaster. These are larger. They're a little bit more like stampede screws. Remember the first time you're taking the screws out of a blaster, they're likely to be quite tight because they actually use the screw to thread the post and so you'll want to add a little extra pressure when you're removing them and give them a good twist to pop loose that seal. It will in fact sometimes actually pop. Um, and you want to make sure you're, you're applying plenty of pressure on this first time because if you don't it's really easy to strip out, strip out the screw head. Uh, and while I do have a video on how to deal with stripped out screws, it's just far nicer to not have to. Interestingly, this one does not have the screws inside the rail, and so we aren't seeing the smaller screws that we usually see in the rail. Come on, come on. Nope, that one doesn't want to come out. Alright, we finally found a different screw. Unsurprisingly, as it was kind of common in these blasters, the one up in the upper top was a much longer screw. And so was the one below it. And that's not surprising because they are what are holding in our um, barrel lug, which is going to have a lot of stress on it. And we do finally have another size. The two down here on this little greeble knob between the bipod legs uh, has slightly shorter screws. And then there's one more hidden here by the bipod. It should have us in. Nope, I missed a little one. Right up here. Right above the jam door. And sure enough, yep, that... Oh, no! That is still a full length one. Interesting. Okay, I would have expected that to be a shorter one. Alright, we are in. Now, as I said, I am going to leave the bipod on. If you wanted to remove it, it's just a pair of screws. Or three screws there that will allow you to take that off. Oh, that's right. There were a few screws still in here. Where'd that go? There we go. Okay, the only other thing on this side is this magazine slide thing. We could remove it, though, again, not really necessary. Does look like it has yet another screw. We'll see if it compares to any of the other ones. Yeah, it's the same as the um, stock lock screws. And that just comes out. Oh, you know what? Let's go ahead and take the bipods off. Just to be thorough. And they appear to be... Yep, same as the main shell screws. And we have one big silver screw in a socket there. And we have a plug. And that's kind of a mounting bracket for it all. It does seem to have gotten some some stress marks there, but hasn't broken. So. All right, that is everything off of that side. There is no mag release on this side. They didn't bother making a ambidextrous back then. They're better about that now, and I do appreciate that being left-handed and all. All right. Now we can start taking off the stuff on this side. We'll start with the bipod. Why not? Uh, these appear to be identical. That's nice. Doesn't matter which way they go. That's our bipod off. Alright, so we can start taking out the internals. Oh, I'll get that a little bit centered for you. Okay. Take out our catch. Might have been better if I had used a uh, yellow one because there are some black parts that kind of blend into the blue a little bit. Hopefully we'll be able to see them well enough on camera. Alright, we're going to take out the trigger. And this lock that it is attached to, which I will explain when we go to reassemble. 
right, that is a lock trigger. There's another lock. Should now be able to lift out the breech, which brings out the jam door. There's all of that assembled. Magazine release, which uses the same screw as the mag uh, lock holder things. Then have our priming indicator right there. And it's a linkage. The magazine thing is decidedly different shape on the side, and I'm not sure why. It definitely looks like there was going to be something else there. A dust cover, maybe? Given the, the look of it, the shape of it, it looks like it, you, it was supposed to have something that flipped down that they then didn't go with. And there's similar, that notch on the other side doesn't make sense. So it looks like something got canceled in R&D. Interesting. We have our dart door lock. So far, all of our large washer-headed screws have been the same. The trigger, uh, the lock, and this have all used the same one. We'll see about this one. Nope. Okay, so those are all interchangeable. That's nice. And now we can remove the breech. Or whatever you want. Where the... Oh, this doesn't actually have a dart door. It just has the dart tooth that comes up. That's interesting. And very interesting. Okay. Well, there was something alive in here at some point. Alright, now we can take off the muzzle, which has its own long screws, silver screws. Again, it's holding in that, that long barrel attachment that this thing came with. So it makes sense that they had really big screws up there. They wouldn't want them shearing out or stripping out. That'll allow us to take out the barrel, the barrel lug, and this top bit of decoration that is yellow. All right, and that is all of the internals removed. Now we will start putting them back in. So, and uh, I'll explain how they all work. Like I said, this one does have a lock that uh, the retaliator didn't. Other than that, they're very similar in many ways, but this does have that one additional lock. All right, the last thing to look at before we start reassembly is our bolt sled plunger tube assembly. And we are gonna take it all partially apart, but not all the way apart. Now we will open up the back train. There's a pair of strangely small screws for how load bearing this is. Of course, the back of this is supported by the back of the shell, so this isn't really the, what's the truly load bearing part, but it's two small silver screws. And we can then get into our mainspring, which the plunger head does have a screw, so it's easy to replace that spring. Uh, generally, if you're going to be doing some kind of an upgrade, this whole assembly will get replaced with stronger parts as they are fairly load-bearing. So, if we wanted to remove this lock, which is our uh, magazine release and jam door lock, you would either have to remove the pin that's up here, which again, often gets done when you, if you replace the bolt sled, uh, or you could just cut it off if, you, if you're not planning to use it at all. Um, they're not terribly important locks, but there are times when you would want to leave them in. But that is what it would allow you to get that off. All right, we're going to reassemble this, and then we will start reassembling the blaster. There's really only one way for this cap to go on here, so it shouldn't be too hard to figure out. All right, we are now ready to start installing the internals. And we're actually gonna start back in the upper back end of the blaster, and we're going to install the priming indicator. We're gonna start with our, uh, there should have been a metal pin that may or may not have come off of the shell when you took it apart, but that's gonna go in there first. Then we're gonna install this part, which is the uh, arm that actually causes it to rotate, and it's gonna go in in the top there so that its spring gets caught there. The spring is fairly captive, but be wary of springage. Next, we're going to install this part, 
which is the actual indicator, and it has a section that is black and a section that is red. When it's at rest, it should be showing the black. You're just going to put it on there so that the teeth engage with the teeth on the back of that arm, and then when you pull it forward, or pull it, it should rotate to the red. Fairly straightforward. After that, we are actually going to install a lock. This one. And take a close look at it because it's very similar to another part that will be installed later. And it is going to go right here towards the back, right behind where the plunger sits. Uh, it has a curved surface on there. That needs to be up and towards the back. Again, be careful of springage. The spring is not particularly captive. You're going to want to make sure that it gets seated in there all the way down. And then it is held in place by one of our large washer-headed screws. And I highly recommend putting that in because it will hopefully ward off spring springing. Make sure it can still move. Lovely. Next, we're going to install the magazine release. And it consists of this part, which is the, the tab that you pull to release. And it should go so that the, the raised part is towards the back of the blaster, so you can hook your finger on it. And this part, which is the part that actually catches the magazine. And it's going to go in right above it, socket onto it. And then we're going to be using one of the medium small screws. It's the same screw from the uh, magazine holder bit, so there should be an odd number of them. And should doesn't have a whole lot of movement, but as you can see, it moves. All right, next we are actually going to install the big part, the plunger bolt sled assembly along with this lock. And uh, it's going to, it's got this blue arm coming back here that is going to go into that lock that we installed, which is in fact our slide lock. This is the lock that prevents you from priming the blaster after it's already been primed. Now you are going to want to make sure that you've got the plunger in the right position. There is a peg on the front that should be pointing directly towards the shell. That peg is going to go into that hole. There are a number of slots and rails that need to get all aligned properly, and it can take a little bit of finicky, a uh, bit of finagling. Um, the back of that blue rod needs to go into our lock there. Our lock up here needs to fit down into its channel, and you may have to use a screwdriver to get its spring in place, but you might be able to, might just be able to leverage it in there like I was just able to. And then we need to get our plunger in place. And you can tell if the plunger is in, if that peg has gone into that socket, if you are not able to rotate the plunger tube. And so now everything should slide properly. Next, we're going to put in the jam door. Get it in under there. And it should be in front of the bolt so that. Um, it locks. Okay, now we can take a look at how some of those locks work. So this this big one that's on the bolt sled assembly is of course our um, mag or jam door and our magazine release lock. Uh, it has an angled surface right here that interacts with this angled surface on the bolt sled. So when the bolt sled comes all the way back it forces down that lock and unlocks our jam door and unlocks our magazine release. As soon as it starts going forward, it re-engages and re-locks both of those. Now this back here, as I said, is our slide lock and it has a curved surface on the top here that is being pushed down by the back end of the plunger rod. As soon as the plunger rod starts going forward, um, this would be able to move up, except it's being held down by that blue rod that's now going through it. 
If we hold the plunger rod back and move the bolt sled forward, now you can see that that moves up. Train, that now moves up and it locks the slide. So the slide cannot go forward while this is in the up position. When we let go of the back of the plunger tube, it then moves forward and pushes that back down, which then unlocks and now we can prime again. So if you want to be able to either multi-prime, so if you're using a sealed breech and you want to load two darts and shotgun, you would need to remove that. Also, if you want to be able to deprime the blaster, pull the sled back, pull the trigger, and slowly release it forward, you will need to remove that. The next part that we're going to be installing is another lock, and it looks like this. This is the part that's very similar to that slide lock that I mentioned, and it is, in fact, another slide lock. It's also the trigger lock, and the way that they man managed to have it be both is actually fairly creative, and we'll see how that works. But you can see there's a cutout in there that needs to be pointing up and the spring should be pointing down and it's going to go into this slot right in front of the trigger. And it's going to go right there. Now we are going to install our trigger because it will help hold this in place. It has this little cutout right here. You'll see that little U-shaped bit and there's a notch out of it. That is going to go into the hole on that lock, and then this will all slide down and lie flat correctly. Uh, we are going to put in a screw. Another one of our large silver washer-headed screws is going to hold all this in place, which will help keep things from getting sproined. And now we can see how this works. Right now, when the, when the trigger is not pulled, if we pull back on our slide, it forces down this lock, which pushes it down into that little cutout and now locks our trigger. So that is how the trigger lock works. However, when this is up, it locks into the slide. When it moves up, it actually locks into the slide slightly. Uh, and if we then pull the trigger, that notch is moved out of alignment. And now if we try to move the slide, it can't because this part can't move down. If the trigger is pulled, then that lock can't move down into that slot and it locks our bolt slot. Now, if we want to be able to deprime this blaster, we need to remove that lock as well because we need to be able to pull the trigger while the slide is back to be able to deprime the blaster. Um, so you'll need to remove that and you'll need to remove that and then you'll be able to deprime the blaster. And both of them are very easy to remove and are not necessary to the function of the blaster. So, all right, the final part that goes here in the back is of course the catch. It's gonna have the spring downwards and pointing up. And it's gonna go into this slot right here. Unfortunately, there's nothing to hold it in place, so hopefully it doesn't go flying as we try to fiddle with other bits, but uh, that is where it goes. It is, interacts directly. This blaster does not have slam fire, so that is what we have going on there. Now we're going to move to the front of the blaster, and we're going to install everything that goes up in here. And it all kind of goes in at the same time, kind of. Um, so a couple of them do anyway. We are going to have to pull back the bolt slightly, and we're going to be installing the breech and the this part. The dart tooth. Kind of at the same time. So we're going to put them together. Uh, there's a slot on the bottom of the breech that matches up with the slot uh, on that. Those go in together. Now we are going to have to pull back on our bolt sled a little bit so that we can drop this into place. There are a number of slots that everything will should properly fit into. And then we can let our bolt sled go forward, but not quite all the way because we, we, so we need to install a screw. And it is a tricky screw to install. It's the screw that holds the return spring for the uh, dart tooth. And there is a post right below the breech that that is going to need to rest on and then you're going to have to get that screw started. I start it manually. You might be able to put it on a magnetic screwdriver and get it into place but that is how I 
am able to get it in. It seems to be the easiest way to do it. You can technically do these in the other order. You can do the front part and then do the bolt assembly, but I find this to be a little bit easier. Okay, there is then one last screw. Our final washer headed screw goes in this post to hold the dart tooth down. And it is important. If you don't have that in place, then uh, rather than getting forced down and opening up the barrel, it will simply pop up. So now when we let go of our bolt, it forces this down uh, because of, again, curved surfaces. So everything seems to be working appropriately. Next, we're going to install our barrel and our barrel attachment lug. There is a wrong and a right way to attach it. Um, if you look at the smaller of the screw holes, uh, there is a shallow side and a deep side. The deep side needs to be pointing down and sockets down onto these two screw posts. So we put our barrel in, put it into the back of the breech, and then socket this down onto it. And there it is. Uh, there are a couple of screws, of course. We have the two long silver screws hold the barrel attachment lug in place. And rightfully so, because it is very load-bearing and needs large screws to make sure it doesn't break or strip out. All right. Now we have just kind of the, the finishing bits. We have our plate that goes here, and it's this one. They are different. I have my theories on what this used to be. Okay, we're going to be using the small screws, the smallest of the black screws that we have. And last but not least, we have our bipod. So, bipod part goes on there. We then have one of these lugs that goes on to it. And it just uses full-sized um, shell screws to hold them on. So the same large screws that we had for most of the outside shell. And finally, the long silver screws on with the black washer looking thing. There we go. All right, that's what we have going on on this side of the shell, other than our rail nubbin. Goes right there. All right, oh wait, one last cosmetic bit. We have our yellow bit that goes on the top right here. Okay, that is that side of the shell completed. We can now set it aside and grab the other side of the shell which just has a couple of additional parts. We, of course, have this bit of magazine well cover. Again, two of our small screws. And we have the other half of our bipod. Same parts and process there. And that's the other side of the shell assembled. Now we can put the two halves together. And hopefully everything goes smooth. It does appear to have. So we will put all of the shell screws in. If you will recall, we had down here between the bipod is where the only two small screws went. And remember, when you're putting in screws, especially shell screws, Um, always rotate counterclockwise until you feel it lock, you know, click down into place. Otherwise you're not lining up your thread correctly and you could be chewing up your screw post and if you do that too many times it won't, uh, won't work anymore. The screw post won't. Okay, the next two that we're going to put in are our two super long ones, which were the ones up here in the barrel. We've got our two long ones up here in the front. And then all the rest of these shell screws are the same size, so it doesn't matter where you put them. Remember, there is one screw hidden under the bipod here. 
So that's all of the screws into the shell. So now we're going to take a look at the stock, because we did remove a couple of parts from it. First thing we're going to reinstall is the magazine uh, holding thing. Uh, it consists of three parts, this tiny little pip, which be careful when you're dis if you disassemble this because that's a real easy part to, to lose. And then the frame holding it into place, this part. And finally, uh, a fairly heavy spring. It's, a, it's an impressively heavy spring. So we're going to put the pip into this part, so that it's pointing down. Heavy spring goes in behind it so that it creates a little locking tab. Uh, there is then only one way to put it on here because one of the two screw posts has a little tab sticking out and there is a notch corresponding with that. So that goes down onto that. We're going to be using the medium sized screws because that spring is fairly load bearing so they went with slightly longer screws for it apparently. All right, next we're going to install the stock locking mechanism. It starts with a, a light spring. It's very similar to the spring for the rail attachment nubs, and it goes on this little pin right here. We then have this part, which is the, uh, the part that actually kind of locks the stock, and it's going to sit on the little peg that that spring is down on. We then have this part, The, the button that kind of unlocks it, and it's going to go on to there, and there. They, the, the two angled surfaces need to ride on top of each other, and they kind of finicky about that. And then finally, the cover plate, this part, is going to go down on top so that that locking lug sticks through the top. We then have our two smallest screws that are left are what are going to hold it all down. This isn't particularly load-bearing, so they didn't feel the need. Um, I would be very tempted if I was actually going to run one of these and still have this stock be collapsible to replace that spring with a stronger one. Because it is possible with enough force, especially if you're using a, a, a high-powered spring in your blaster, um, for that stock lock to give. Um, it's, not, it's not the best design, but it does work. Okay, now we can put our stock on. Simply sockets in like so. This should go down on top of it. And then it has its own screws that were different from the rest of the shell screws. They're a little bit smaller, but they are all the same as each other. So it doesn't matter what order you put them into the stock. Now that is together. And it locks. Lovely. Last thing to go in is our priming bar. So there. This goes on there. Locks on. All right. Now we can test all of our controls again. Unlock that. All right. Uh, in when it's unprimed, this should be locked, and it is. The trigger should be free. When it comes back, this should be unlocked. This should be locked. This should be unlocked. Move it forward, this locks, that locks, this is free. If we're holding this, this is locked. Sure enough, everything seems to be in working order. So that is the complete disassembly and reassembly of the Nerf long shot. Uh, be sure to vote on what you want me to cover next. Survey will be down in the description as always. And I hope this was helpful to some of you. And thank you guys for watching.